Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and another tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how I painted this little winter fox in watercolour and give you a few tips and techniques for painting realistic animal fur quickly and easily. I'm also going to talk a bit about water control and timing, because understanding a bit about both of these things can really help you achieve the results you want in your own watercolour paintings. So whether you are a beginner to watercolour or a bit more practised, I hope you enjoy the video and find it interesting or helpful. If you fancy trying this one out for yourself, all the materials I'm using today will be listed in the description box below along with a reference photo from Pixabay. So without further ado, let's begin by talking about water control and timing. I'm going to paint the background and the outside edge of the fox's fur first, and for this I want soft fuzzy edges, so I'm using the wet in wet technique, and this is when you apply wet paint to wet paper. Timing is important for this technique, so I'm preparing my paints first. I have just two watercolours to begin with, Winsor & Newton's Brown Ochre and Mission Gold's Magello Blue. To pre-wet my paper, I'm also going to be using this larger size 12 silver black velvet brush, and this allows me to cover a lot of ground quite quickly. I use this wet and wet technique a lot in my watercolour paintings, as it allows you to mix colours together on the surface of the wet paper and gives you those nice soft paint edges, but it can be unpredictable, and you have less control over where your paint edges stop compared with, say, painting on dry paper. So this is where knowing about water control and timing can really help. I've mentioned in previous videos that when you're painting wet on wet, you want to aim for a nice even sheen when pre-wetting the surface of your paper, like you can see here. If you have too much water, then you can end up with puddles and your paper and paint will dry unevenly. Too little water, however, and your paper will dry too fast. So take your time when pre-wetting your paper. With that done though, and having prepared the watercolour paints I want to use, I'm ready to start painting. But painting wet on wet isn't just about getting the right amount of water on your paper. You also need to think about the amount of water on your brush too. So after I've dipped my size 8 brush into my water jar, and before picking up any paint, I dab off the excess water on a towel. So the brush is damp but not dripping. I then can pick up some blue paint and use broad sweeping strokes to apply it to the surface of the paper. I don't paint right up to my pencil outline though because the paint will bleed out a bit as the paper is still wet. Now I need to paint the outline edge of the fox whilst the paper is still damp. So again I rinse my brush in my water jar and dab off the excess water on my towel before picking up the brown watercolour. I then paint a smooth continuous line for the outside edge of the fox's body, and this time I paint up against my pencil line, so I get that soft furry effect without the blue and brown mixing together. If, on the other hand, I had loaded up my brush with a lot of water before applying the brown fur and not taken off the excess on my towel, the water in my brush would have likely pushed the blue paint away and the brown watercolour would have spread further out than I wanted it. So by controlling the amount of water in my brush, I am better able to control where my paint edges stop and get the outline where I want it to on the fox's body. If, however, you do want your paint edges to bleed out further or be a bit darker, you can always go back and tap in more paint like I'm doing here, but you still need to be careful of how much water is on your brush and do it before your paper has started to dry to avoid creating watercolour blooms, and that's where timing is important too. If your paper has started to dry, you need to wait for it to dry completely before re-wetting and applying another layer. It takes practice though, so small sketchbook studies like these are really helpful. My paper had almost dried at this point, so before I re-wet the bottom part of the paper to paint in the foreground, I took advantage of this and used a dry brush to quickly paint in some of the lines in the snow, before continuing as before. Rewetting the paper using the wet in wet technique and finishing off the area of fur and snow at the bottom. 
I've got a bit more pigment and water on my brush here, so I don't paint right up against my pencil line this time, as the paint will bleed out more. I'm also starting to think about the length and direction of fur growth, as you can see from the direction of my brush strokes. Ok, so that first layer is all dry now, so I can begin to paint the rest of the fur. I still want soft paint edges for this layer, so I re-wet the whole of the body again, avoiding the eyes and the nose, and paint in more brown ochre. I use a dilute paint mix first, and whilst the paper is still damp, I build up some of the darker areas of fur just by adding more pigment. If you want more control in these darker areas, you can also apply paint onto dry paper, and soften out any hard edges with a clean damp brush. I continued to paint onto dry paper as I started to suggest at the fur length and direction with more watery brown ochre. I check back frequently to my reference photo and try and match the length and direction of fur growth with my brush strokes. The paper is dry now, so it's time to paint the eye and nose, and for these tiny details I switch down to a smaller size full brush. For the eye I use the very tip of my brush and paint onto dry paper. Painting wet on dry gives you a lot more control and crisp edges, and especially in tiny areas like this you don't have to worry about timing, so you can really concentrate without having to rush. I did the same for the fox's nose. And used a clean damp brush to soften out the edge there. Still painting onto dry paper, I went on to paint the darkest fur on the fox's ears. As with the wet on wet technique, I rinsed my brush in clean water first, dabbed off any excess on my towel, and then loaded up with some concentrated sepia. I wanted just enough water on my brush to help the paint flow smoothly across the surface of the paper, without leaving any gaps. For the fur inside the fox's ears, I used both the wet in wet and wet in dry techniques, first going in with some grey paint that I'd mixed from the blue and sepia on my palette, and letting it bleed out onto the wet paper. And then layering over some darker fur detail once the paper had dried, for more controlled lines and details. He's really starting to come to life now, but I still need to build up the values on the fox's fur, so next I'm preparing some more brown shades. I've got burnt umber, sepia, more brown ochre, and burnt sienna. Then I pre-wet the paper again before dropping in paint, as although I want to add depth to the fur, I still want it to look soft and fluffy rather than wiry. So I apply the different browns quite loosely, but still following the general direction of fur growth. Because the paper has been pre-wet, the paint edges soften and blur, but the paper isn't so wet that they bleed out completely and cover up the underneath layers. These lighter underneath layers still show through, which gives us variety and helps add depth to the fur. If you're worried about your paper being too wet, or you're not getting any definition to your brush strokes, you can easily dab off some of the excess water with a paper towel or a brush. Or if it's clean water, you can simply wait a few minutes for the paper to dry out a bit. I continue to build up the fur working from light colours to darker colours, and trying to match up my values with what I could see in the reference photo.
When it came to the darker fur underneath the fox's tail here, my paper had pretty much dried out. But using an almost dry brush and applying watercolours onto dry paper can also be a really easy and quick way to create the look of fur. This dry brush technique works because without water on the brush or paper to help the paint flow, your brush skips over the tooth of the paper, which has the effect of adding texture to your painting. I continue to add further layers of watercolour to this fox's fur, building it up gradually, but since I'm painting onto dry paper now, I don't have to wait long for each layer to dry before painting the next. And unlike the wet in wet technique, timing and water control are not something you have to worry about so much, since there's a lot less water involved. Now something I didn't mention when I was talking about water control earlier on in the video and the wet in wet technique is that you may also get varying results or degrees of success depending on the type of paper and brushes you are using. But I don't want to overwhelm or overcomplicate things by going into too much detail on that today. So if you are a beginner, try practicing with whatever watercolour supplies you have. If you do want to invest in new supplies though, I would recommend buying a watercolour paper that is 100% cotton, as you will find that it holds up better to being repeatedly wetted than wood pulp or cellulose paper, and it will yield better results. So far as brushes go, the ones with natural hair tend to hold more water than synthetic ones, but are more expensive, so like I said, practice with whatever you have. I would recommend if you can though, to have one larger brush for covering larger areas quickly, and one smaller brush for the details, as it will make things easier and more time efficient, but in my opinion, good paper is more important than good brushes. Okay, so now I'm done with the layering process, there's just a few more things I want to do. The first of which is to paint a glaze over the fur. A glaze is just a transparent wash that you apply to dry paper, and it's a great way to quickly and easily change the colour and the overall look of a painting, without ruining all your layers underneath. I also wanted to add in some grasses to both the background and the foreground so I mixed up some grey watercolour using sepia and magello blue. To make the grasses in the background out of focus and appear further away, I painted them onto wet paper. And to bring the grasses around the fox into focus, I painted them onto dry paper this time using a small size 2 brush. I'm having to do my painting later on in the day at the moment, so I apologise for the poor lighting at this part of the video. Anyway, to finish off my fox painting, I added a spattering of snow using white gouache on an old bristly paintbrush. And now just to remove the tape. So that's it guys, I know I tried to cover a lot in this video and I'm certainly no expert, but hopefully it's been useful in some way, even if just to make you aware that water control and timing can make a huge difference to your painting. If you have any questions or comments, then please drop them in the comments box below. And if you like the video, then please give it a thumbs up, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified as soon as I upload a new video. Thank you so much for watching, take care, and I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.